Hey everyone, Nefigel Tech here, and today I would like to show you how you can install the latest Android 12 release onto your Raspberry Pi 4. So this method will work on the Raspberry Pi 4 2GB, the 4GB and the 8GB model, and I assume that it will also work on the Pi 400, since internally both of these models share the same hardware. So what you will need in addition to a Pi is a microSD card or a USB flash drive if you want to boot up a flash drive or an SSD, whatever you prefer. I just use this SanDisk Extreme microSD card. Uh, you will need a microSD card adapter, of course, if you're using a microSD card. And since this latest build of Android um, doesn't ship with open Google Apps, open Google Apps, so open gaps, is currently not available for Android 12. I also like to prepare a USB flash drive with some popular uh, APK files that we will use in this video. So I will load Chromium onto this, I will load a YouTube application onto it and Aptoid, so an alternative app store. You can also use Aptroid or any other market um, that can replace Google Play Store. So let's get started. So first of all, of course, we need to head over to our PC. So on our PC, we need to download the latest release of Lineage. So we are going to install Lineage OS 19.0 onto our Raspberry Pi. And as always, I will drop all relevant links in the video description. So just make sure to get over to this Android file host link and start the download. So of course, I've already downloaded this file. It's very simple. Download it, look for a mirror and download uh, one of these files that is closest to your area. And then what you will need if you don't have it yet is Berlina Etcher. So Berlina Etcher will be used to flash the image to a micro SD card. But if you're watching this video, I assume you already know where to download it, how to download it. But just to make sure, I'll drop this link in the video description as well. Um, then we're actually good to go to flash the micro SD card. So pop in your micro SD card to your PC, open up Bellina Etcher, go to flash from file, and locate the Lineage 19.0 release that we just downloaded. So in your case, it will be a zip file. Just make sure to extract the zip file and you will have this image. Select that image, select target. So in my case, it's the 32 gig micro SD card. And then we're going to flash this file. So it just gives a few seconds, of course, depending on the speed of your micro SD card or storage device that you're using. This may take anywhere from like a few minutes to maybe half an hour. So while it's doing its thing, we can also prepare a USB flash drive. So if you want, this is purely optional, but if you want to have Chromium, uh, the Aptide App Store and YouTube fans installed on your Raspberry Pi, uh, now is a good time to plug in a second USB flash drive. And as you can see, I've already got these APK files loaded onto my USB drive. Make sure your USB drive is formatted XFAT, since that's the file system that Android uses or that Android accepts from an external storage device. And then I'll drop all links, of course, for Aptoid, for Chromium, and for YouTube fonts in the video description. Just simply download all these files and place the APK files onto your USB flash drive. And then, as you can see, as I was talking about the APK files, the flash completed successfully. So we've now installed Android onto a micro SD card, and we're good to go to plug our Pi into a TV or into a monitor and see how it works. So let's do it right now. So here I have the Pi 4. I've connected an Ethernet cable to it and of course the micro HDMI cable. And now I will plug in the power and let's see what happens. So I'll just put it to the side and focus on display output right here. So of course the initial boot may take a while. Uh, again, it depends on the speed of your card, of course. Uh, here you can see it's going to be from the micro SD card in a second. And I will just speed this process up so you can see what it looks like. And there we are. So to navigate around, you can use, for example, a keyboard and mouse. So I've just attached a keyboard and a mouse, as you can see right here. So just let's briefly go over the settings right here, show you the about section. So about tablet, it says Raspberry Pi 4, Android version 12, 
then it adds 19.0. So that's all good. And here you can see we have the latest Android security update of December the 5th, 2021. So that's also good. And we also have a few Raspberry Pi specific settings that we can take a look at. So if you go to system right here, scroll down, we do have advanced settings. You can set your display resolution. You can enable touchscreen if you're using the official 7 inch touchscreen for your Raspberry Pi. And you can also overclock your Raspberry Pi. So you can see the maximum CPU frequency is currently at the default 1500 megahertz. But you can go all the way up to 2 gigahertz on your Raspberry Pi if you, for example, want to run some emulators on your device. So now let's show you how you can install some additional applications. So I've just plugged in the USB flash drive. And if we go to the files application right here, you can see that my USB device is being recognized. So right here we have Aptide, we do have Defense Manager, and we have Chromium. So if we open up Aptide right here, you can install this application as a replacement to the Google Play Store. Hit continue, hit install, and this will install the Aptoid App Store for us. And in a separate video, I will also show you some uh, native Android gaming performance and some emulator performance on the Raspberry Pi for running Android 12. But for now, just show you that Aptoid will work on the Raspberry Pi. We can skip this, and here you can see that we can download some additional applications for Raspberry Pi 4. And the same way you can also install Chromium on your Raspberry Pi. We may have some issues, so I've also tried it just a few seconds ago, it didn't quite work for me. So we can also take a look at the native browser right here. And I think this one will work. So if I just search for NetChild. That's worked reasonably well, as you can see right here. So if I go back to Google, let's see if it works. There we go. And we go and look for YouTube. We can open up YouTube from the web browser. We can search for Neffichelt. Oh, that doesn't seem to work, so now we just enter like this. Open up a video. Uh, let's see, we can go to, I think we can do 1080p on this build. Open up stats for nerds. Go full screen. That's a bit glitched. So I think I first have to open up like a game to make that message go away. So I'm not full screen then. But we're running at 1920 by 1080p. Uh, it's dropping some frames now, but I think it will stabilize over time. Nope. Is having a hard time. I think full screen performance will be a bit better, but since I'm unable to get this message out of the way, yeah, so it's gonna be a bit harder. So, well, maybe let's drop down to 720p, hit OK, hit play, and this should work, no problems. Still a few dropped frames here and there. Now it seems to smoothen out. And of course you can also always add a small overclock to your Raspberry Pi. And that should alleviate all of the frame drops that you encounter at 720p. But as you can see this build is pretty fast, pretty responsive overall. So in the next video I will show you some gaming performance of the Raspberry Pi for running Android 12. But for now, this has been the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos, guys. Peace out.